Hey, how's it going? This is Rory from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So welcome along. This is a new Cinema 4D tutorial, and basically we're going to have a look at creating something along these lines. Now, I saw a post on LinkedIn by Michael Greenwood, and he'd created this kind of zeotrope in Blender. It had a little animated character walking, and I remembered that I wanted to look at doing something like this years ago, and I just never got around to it. And then I thought this would be a really good example of something that's nice and quick and actually quite straightforward to put together. So let's have a go with it. First of all, you want to get yourself over to Mixamo. Um, and here you can grab a character or you can upload your own. You can either use their characters or upload your own. Do whatever you want. Uh, and then under animations, we can find a nice walk. So I'm going to put walking and you can choose whatever one of these you want Ideally you want to choose one that loops well and is not too many frames before it has to because otherwise your circle is going to be enormous So I found this one here called happy walk. That's it And when I assign that to my character, there we go. He's walking along So we need to make sure we do in place So he's walking on the spot and we can see here that we're using a 34 frames in total, 33 there, um, okay. It's looping perfectly and not too long. So this is absolutely perfect. So we hit download and we grab this. Basically my settings I'm using here is, in this case with the skin, an FBX at 30 frames per second, no frame reduction, job's done. Now once you have your file, dump it inside of Cinema 4D. The version you're using shouldn't matter too much for the majority of what we're doing. I'm on 22 now, and towards the end I'll do some redshift stuff just to do the final bits. But the actual setting up of the scene is all standard in for as far back as I can remember, at least anyway. So these settings are absolutely fine as they are. No worries, we'll just hit go. We need to make sure that we do have the animation track selected. Obviously we want the geometry and all of this. All absolutely fine. So there's our guy. Now, uh, it's worth noting that he's going to be pretty big. If I create a cube, see, he's quite large. So we do want to remember that, but we'll deal with that later. And we've got a few things we need to do here. So firstly, I'm just going to create a null and I'm going to plop the two items inside that null and rename it doll. And I created it as a new null so that the access point was at zero. Perfect, perfect. I'm going to put this into a new sequence. So I'm just going to press copy, new project and paste just so that all my settings for the scene are standard, just in case that F, uh, FBX import set anything a little bit odd, this makes sure everything is how I want it. So I'm working from a clean slate, that's good. Now, if we go into layout and change to animate, we can see these are our keyframes. Okay, so let's have a look here. What we want to do is basically create, I think 30, we said 33, didn't we? Yeah, so I need to create 33 copies of him. So let's press Control C and then Control V 32 times. Okay, so I now have my 33 copies of my doll and I want to go and do some bits down here. So I'm just going to click on here and do undock. So that way I can make this nice and big. There we go. And essentially what I want to do here is remove the first keyframe for every animation, but moving downwards as I go. So basically grab all of these, delete. Uh, I messed that one up, undo. I wanted to grab all, I forgot that the very, very top one isn't, that's the summary keyframe. So I need to go from there. Okay, that's it, perfect. And basically I need to work my way along all the way to down here. And there we go, beautiful. All nice and done. So I'm now just gonna come back to here, I'm gonna choose layout, animate again, and that should fix, there we go, fix that. And now if I go back to frame one, you'll see that we have all these little guys here. Kind of looks a bit crazy, but that's all of the frames of the animation. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Right, so again, we've got another slightly laborious task here. Now the important point is I can't do anything with these yet in their current state because if I do they'll always click back to a T-pose. See if I try and put him in a cloner you see how it puts him back to the T-pose and it's because we need to kind of we need to do something here just to lock that animated state to the model. Inside of my doll null I have a figure which has a skin on it and then I have all the bones. So again, if I just delete the bones, it will put them in the T-pose if I just delete the skin. So what I have to do is actually go figure, right click, and then do current state to object. That will create a second one. So let's do that. 
current state to object, creates a second one that doesn't have the plus, and then you delete the plus, and then you can delete the uh, bones. And that's basically what we've got to do all the way along. So I'm just going to mark this one because I just did it, obviously. So I'm going to put a uh, X beside it just so I know what one that is. Hit the little search up here and type in figure. That now shows me all of those. So I can select all of these, right click and choose current state to object. Now if I close that, um, I'm going to extract all of these. Now there's two ways you could do this. One is you can right click on these and do unfold all and that will basically open up all these folders but it also opens up all those bones ones so it makes it a bit nasty. So my other way to do this is a bit noisy but it's like this. And that was basically just pressing right and up a lot a bunch of times. So I need to select all the figures that have the plus next to them. So just holding control, clicking through each one like so, and then hit delete. That does that. And then in here we can now type mix and we can grab all of these. Click the top one, press shift, click the bottom one and delete. And there we go. We can just turn that off now and we are good to go. We can now select all, right click and do fold all and that will tidy it all up for us. Okay, so we now have all our locked in position little characters. Perfect. These I now want to put inside of a cloner. So I will select uh, a cloner and I will set it from grid array to radial. And then I'm going to place every one of these dolls into that cloner. Okay, next I need to expand my radius out so that they're not all on top of one another. Good, good, good. For now actually, I'm gonna go back into my standard layout gives it a little bit more room for breathing. So in my cloner, uh, expand this out. We need to make sure that our count is 33, so it's our number, and expand it out until no one is kind of overlapping one another. And that looks about right. Now obviously they're all facing inwards, so they would be walking away. So I'll come into the cloner's transform, and I think, oh, not that one, is not that one. It'll be this one, there we go. Need to put that one round 180 degrees and now all of our guys are facing outwards. Grand, super, awesome. We're nearly there, we're very, very close now. So the next thing I'm going to do is create the base that they're going to appear on. So cylinder, uh, ah, do you remember, see that's really small. So I actually want to reduce the size of this a bit. And now that I've done all of that other work, I can easily shrink this down just by pressing T and then clicking and dragging. Um, again, before, while I had all the bones and the skins, uh, resizing it makes it go really crazy. So it's best to do that at this stage. So now that we've done that, we can now create a new cylinder and we'll make that one big enough to go all the way around them and plop it down so it's on about the right position. Something like that. Here I'll just press NB and that just shows us, shows us our lines and we can see that our cylinder needs a few more segments to look a little bit better than that. Okay, the next thing I am going to do is get this cylinder so it's spinning. I want to create a cube and this is just, I'm literally just gonna use this almost like a null. So this is just the pivot point. Uh, in that cube, I'm going to go to Simulate Dynamics Connector. I hold down Alt, and then that will put that connector in the same position as the cube. Take the cube back out of that connector. And I'll just move it up a bit. Now, if I go and press S and zoom in, we can see that that is on its side. So we'll just rotate that so that it is upwards. And the next thing I will then do is, with that still selected, let's go Simulate Dynamics Motor. Uh, I was holding Alt again, and I'll just take that connector out. I kind of always do this. There are other ways to do this, but I just always do it like this. It, that's fine. Um, next, uh, now that we have that, we need to sort of connect all of this up. So I'm going to plop my cloner inside of the cylinder. And th the cylinder, I'm going to give simulation rigid body tag like that. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the tags. If you are interested in more info on uh, the dynamics, I did a video uh, with 10 tips on dynamics. So I recommend check that one out if uh, you want to know more about that. So uh, next, this cube, I'm going to do simulation collider body so that this is static. 
and then the connectors i'm going to put the cube on the bottom and the cylinder on the top and then in the motor i'm just going to put the cylinder in object a and now if i zoom out a bit and i press play there we go it's all falling now <laughs> it looks kind of funny but here we've got a very very simple thing to fix all of these um, guys are being treated as individually dynamic objects I just need to come here and change inherit tag to collision compound shape now when I hit play it'll just spin as a, an ordinary thing and we can see we're, we're, we're getting somewhere this is already looking quite close right so I'm just gonna stick 2,000 frames in there and then we can set this running but my motor uh, talk I'm gonna put to 100 for absolutely no reason at all I am literally just doing it because 10 just feels like it's too low, but it really doesn't matter in this case. And I'm going to start this at zero. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to find the, the first point in which this is at about the right speed. So I'm going to hit play and obviously nothing's happening. So if I just press shift and up on there, we should eventually start seeing it moving. Okay, we're not. Why are we not? interesting okay I'm not sure why that was let me just put it to one and press play there we go so right okay so shift and up will uh, increase it in increments of 10 so we can uh, start getting an idea of about what point it's kind of in sync with the the shutter speed I guess I'll be honest right I'm gonna say this now the technicalities of how this is working and what's going on I don't know <laughs> it's just as simple as I kept pressing buttons until I got the result that I desired and for me right now that's all that matters so um, I am 100% sure that a ton of people will be able to come into the comments and say oh well this is the reason it's because of this and this and this and that's absolutely wonderful I please welcome you to do so however right now I don't know this <laughs> so uh, right so we're still increasing in speed and you see now it seems like it's actually going backwards but our guys are kind of walking, right? So there we go. Now we, it seems like we're slowing down, but we're actually increasing the speed, but we can see our animation is working. So we just need to get it to that point where it's not sliding to the side. So that 230, no 330, it's just ever so slightly going to the right. So we come down, let's try 25. Okay, up a bit. So 228. It seems to still be slightly going to the right with that and with 27 so let's go 27.5 now i would say that that is absolutely perfect so from the yeah that that is perfect because that is just basically spinning so fast that it looks like <laughs> it looks like they're walking it's just amazing i love that and the fact that you can move the camera around and it just keeps it it's so cool so basically in my uh, little clip I did it so that at about frame 200 we have a keyframe so we'll just press that to make a keyframe then go back to frame zero and we're gonna set that to zero that way we get this kind of nice spin speed up and it kind of starts to go backwards slows down and then sort of syncs up and now it's going and that's really cool and like you can do some interesting things like maybe add some nice coloring to the um, the sphere I quite like the clean look so I just went with that I said sphere just then I meant cylinder that is well that is basically it in terms of setting it up so now I am literally into the phase of just playing around and doing the final bits to make it look pretty so what will I do firstly my cylinder I want to do a fillet on the cap of that because I want that to have a nice edge so something along those lines next I am going to create a tube and I'm going to make this thing really quite big. I want it ever so slightly bigger than this. Uh, we need some more rotation segments so that it's a bit smoother. And I'm also going to lower it because I quite like this. You could do anything you want when it comes to the design of all of this, but I just kind of like this, this look of this disc coming out of the floor like this. So let's do the same thing on there. We'll give that a little fillet just for the sake of it. And there should be enough room in there for, to make that dark now excellente I have a nice texture for my character that I made in substance painter so I'm just gonna import that in and set that up in redshift quickly okay so I have my texture now which I'm gonna place on my cloner so as I mentioned I'm not gonna cover this I'll just quickly show you exactly what I've got 
literally these are the outputs from substance painter so we've got the ambient occlusion goes through a multiplier and then into uh, my material here um, then the roughness goes into the reflective roughness channel the uh, normals go through a bump map uh, they go through this bump blender this isn't needed in this case because I didn't have a, a bump map which this would normally mix with that so uh, it's literally just going straight through uh, and then finally the height map goes into the displacement and then the displacement on the output and that is it and like I say I'm not covering that in details in this so that's just what's going on that's how I've got my texture on my guy I am also going to switch to a better redshift layout here so that I can actually start seeing what's going on right cool so I want to create a few things so I'm going to create a light um, dome let's put our let's put that on there we go right so we can get a kind of idea of, of how we're looking uh, we'll put this something like this groovy uh, let's create another material and I want this to basically just be white um, and just pull back the reflection a little uh, and then we'll pop that on our cylinder like that that makes that white and I'll also put that on my tube nice okay um, in fact I'm not gonna put that on the tube I'm gonna create another one which is not going to be reflective This is the thing I found with Redshift, by the way. I don't know if anyone else knows why this does this, but if I have this preview going, it does not update the thumbnails and they just stay black until they turn that off and double click them. It's a bit odd, really, but okay. Um, so let's set that to no reflection. And then I'm gonna set that on my tube. And then just have a look at this guy down here. Let's go back into here. And I want to push that white a bit more. There we go, now that looks pretty seamless now. Might need a few more tweaks if I was doing it for a final, but that will do for this case. I want another light, I think, so I'm just gonna create a uh, area light and lift it up. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's see. Don't want to spend too long on this. I just wanted to add something that picks up some highlights on the on the characters. Right, if I zoom in again, all the lighting has made my scene in, almost impossible to see here, so we have to use this one. Um, but I think maybe we come into this light and just put the exposure up a bit. Let's brighten her up a bit. Okay, I'm just going to stick an HDRI image on that. That should just make it look a little bit more interesting. Oh, okay, right. And now I want to... Um, 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 I need a second dome light <laughs> that hasn't got that on. So let me come up to here, redshift, lights, dome light. Yeah, I mean, uh, in all fairness, you're watching me learn still here. I'm still trying to get my head around redshift. Okay, something along those lines. That, now we're back to, we're, we're close to what I made in my, in my first time of doing it. And yeah, so basically that's it anyway. Obviously we can't preview that. There's no way that's gonna preview fast enough, but um, that's it. You now render that out and you've got your, your working zeotrope. Um, if I just switch these off, we can see that again. I can hit play. Oh, let me turn off the preview. That will not be helping. And we'll see that he'll get up to speed and he'll just start bowling along, having a lovely old time as he does it. Brilliant. Okay, well, anyway, I won't go on anymore because, yeah, um, we were finished ages ago, let's be honest. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please uh, do the old like button, hit the subscribe button as well. And don't forget, click the little bell. That way you get notified when new videos go up. And of course, please feel free to go into the comments and tell me your thoughts. And if you spotted any better ways to do anything, again, I always welcome um, being taught by uh, quite often the guys that know more, a lot more than me. <laughs> so that's all groovy. All right, guys, thanks very much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.